Hey everybody, it's Charlene. Today I'm gonna to share with you this beautiful card that I made using some products from Honey Bee Stamps. So we're gonna start out here with the Lovely Layers Amaryllis dies. You can see it's a full set of dies for layering a beautiful amaryllis cluster. So I'm cutting everything out of white cardstock and now I've put it down here and I'm gonna color it with my Distress Oxide inks. First, I'm starting out with some mowed lawn and I'm coloring all of the leaves as well as the stem there. And now I'm coming in with some rustic wilderness and I'm using the rustic wilderness for shading and I'm using a detail brush for this. I'm coming along the middle of each of the main leaves and that's gonna make it look like the leaves are kind of folding in towards themselves from the sides. Once I have all three of the leaves done, I'm also going to bring that rustic wilderness right down into the center of those three leaves because I'm going to have my stem going down into that center area. So I want that to look like the darkest, most shaded area. So you'll see I'm going to get a little bit more rustic wilderness here on my brush and I'm really going to rub it all down there at the base of those leaves. Now I'm gonna pick up this whole leaf piece and I'm gonna go all the way around the edges with the Rustic Wilderness. Now this is a bit of a flicking motion. You also could do this with your regular larger size brushes or a foam dauber, it works just as well. And you just kind of go all the way around and what this serves to do is it helps the piece kind of pop off of your card because it's dark around the edges. It's going to create just that little bit of added contrast to the background of the card. So it's really going to bring your attention to the actual floral that's on the front of the card. I repeated the process with the remaining two leaves as well as the stem. And then I actually off camera cut out another cluster of leaves and repeated the process. And I cut out two additional stems and I repeated the process with those as well. On the stems, I did bring the shading up pretty high and you'll see when I get the card all put together, you actually mostly see the shading on the stems, which works really well. So for the floral, I've cut it all out here. I've put it all down onto my sticky grid and I'm coloring all of it with sponge sugar and that's gonna give a nice light pink all the way over. And then I'm taking a detail brush here and I'm just running it along the areas that have the details impressed into them by the dye. So these are the areas on the petal that are going to show as you layer everything up. It'll be more noticeable once we glue everything together in the next step here. Off camera, I did cut out two additional sets of the florals and I colored them in the exact same way. For the bulbs, I'm using some gathered twigs and I'm coming up and over the bottoms. I'm not coloring these entirely because I do want some of that white peeking through, but then I'm gonna go all the way around on the edges just like I did with the leaves in order to help those to pop. Next, we're gonna come in here and put our florals together. So I'm gonna take the second piece and I'm going to add some glue to it and I'm gonna put it on the first piece. And so then you'll see that base piece, the first piece, it's gonna show where the detail was impressed. It's gonna peek out now. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the third piece. I'm gonna put glue on the back of it and glue it to the second piece. And now off camera, I cut out duplicates of the fourth, fifth, and sixth piece, and I'm gonna layer those up. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm gonna give my floral a little bit more dimension by doing that. Using a pair of reverse tweezers is really helpful when you're working with small little die cut pieces like this. I like to add glue and hang on to my piece with my tweezers. You can see here that I'm adding the stamen and I actually decided to keep this all white. I thought it was a nice stylistic choice. And so now I can move on to the remainder of the petal pieces. These are the ones that we have layered up. I've got piece four down. This is now piece five. And then I'll be adding 
piece number six here. And those extra little pieces are really what give the flower a lot of depth and dimension and make it look 3D. I am coming in with a Copic marker. I'm using RV14. This is a great way to add those tiny little details that you see on florals. I'm doing a few flicks here and there, and then I'm also doing a few dots here and there, and it really just takes the floral up a notch. Going around the edges again here, just like we did with the leaves, this time I'm using the picked raspberry in order to go all the way around. And then lastly, I am going to add the little anther pieces on. These are in white as well. I toyed with doing them in yellow, but I really wanted the entire statement to be white. So now I've arranged everything how I like it. You can see everything put together there. And I'm gonna show you an easy way to glue together your pieces. Now, one thing you can do is you can use press and seal and you can cover the entire thing with press and seal and I've done that uh, in other videos and the other thing you can do is what I'm doing today which is reverse gluing is kind of what I call it I've got everything arranged and then I'm just taking the topmost piece and I'm using my tweezers to remove it I add glue underneath wherever that piece is going to be and then I press the piece down, let it adhere a little bit, and I just keep moving that way from front to back. I started with the florals, then it was on to the leaves, and then on to the stems. Now I am doing the bulbs, and so I'm gluing the topmost one to the bottom too. I have the florals, they're still loose, but I'm just getting a sense of where I want my bulbs to be glued together by keeping the florals there. And now the little pot, which I also left in white, I'm putting some adhesive foam squares on there. I did remove the tape from the top portion so that it would stick to the bulbs, but I haven't removed it from the bottom yet. I'll do that once we put the card together. There is a small detail piece that you can add to the pot as well. It goes along the bottom. And last but not least, I'm gonna cut off the little bits of stem that are sticking out above the florals. For our background, I'm gonna use a piece of paper from the Pinstripes and Polka Dots paper pad. This is the holiday paper pad. You see that beautiful gray paper. It actually goes so well with our pink florals. And for our sentiment, I'm gonna be using the Heartfelt Hello stamps and dies. I've chosen to use To My Cherished Friend, so I've stamped that out and I'm gonna die cut it off camera. Next, we can move to putting everything together. For my sentiment, I did cut out two extra in white cardstock so that I could layer everything up so it has a little bit more dimension. This helps it to kind of pop off the card, but it's still very sturdy because those layers are done with cardstock. So once I have all three of them together, I just pinch around the edges. And at this point, I did decide I wanted to add a little bit of shading to my white flower pot. So I'm coming in with some lost shadow and I'm just running it along the edges of the flower pot. I think this would also look really fun in some bright colors, or you could even color it with your Copic markers. There's lots of little embossed details that the die creates on the flower pot, which is really nice. So once I have that shading all done, we can go ahead and put the main pieces together. Here is that piece of patterned paper. I'm putting some glue along the back and I've cut out a piece of black cardstock that's gonna give us a very thin black border. I wanted something that was going to tie in with the sentiment so that black border will tie in well with the black print of the sentiment. And now I can go ahead and glue down the florals, but first I'm gonna position my little flower pot there. I've taken the release tape off of the back and putting that down so you can see that nice dimension it adds. 
And now I'm adding my glue all to the back of the floral there, being careful not to get any glue onto the actual flower buds because I'm gonna put some adhesive foam squares behind there as well to help pop everything up. In addition to popping up the florals, I'm gonna pop up the leaves here and there along the sides of the card. So I'm using some smaller adhesive foam squares to accomplish that, and I'm kind of putting them out towards the edges of the leaves so we don't get any creasing on the leaves. Then you can see I've got those two larger squares for the left and right floral. And then I'm gonna use a small square on the right and left of the center floral. And that's just cause I want it to kind of look like the flowers are coming out towards you from the edges, but that center one is kind of farther back in the bouquet. I did add some foam tape to the back of that main piece before putting it down on my card base. This is an A2 sized card base, so it's four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. And you can see I only peeled down half of the release tape on the foam tape while I was placing it. So that way I could easily position it and then remove those remaining parts of the strips before I push down on the rest of it. I use some liquid glue on the back of the sentiment and I'm putting it down towards the bottom third of the card, towards the right there. And I'm adding some of the pretty silver metallic pearls. Those are from the Holiday Wishes Pearl Stickers. And that's gonna finish off our gorgeous Amaryllis card. I hope you guys picked up some tips and tricks today. Please be sure to like and subscribe as well as hit that notification bell so that I can continue bringing you more crafty content in the future. Until next time, happy crafting.